1984, I relied on Keith a lot because I was a rookie. And I didn't know a lot of the hitters. So a lot of times in certain situations, if it's a man on second or what have you, he would come up to the mound and say, Doc, you know, throw these guy curveballs or pitch around him, make him chase high fastballs or what have you. So I relied a lot on Keith or if I got a guy like, say, two balls on strikes, he may come to mind and say, hey, just pitch around him, just get the next guy. Or he'll say, this guy can't hit curveballs or what have you. So I relied a lot on Keith on the mound because Mel Stoudemire was great, but if he wasn't on the field, he couldn't come there, you know, every hitter or every other hitter. So uh, next year, 1985, we trade for Gary Carter that offseason. Gary was great, I mean, because we had a young pitching staff. Gary was an all-star catcher, great leader. Um, he, he wanted to win. I mean, he'd do whatever it takes to make the pitcher better. He knew how to work each pitcher's personality. Um, and I remember one incident we were playing the Atlanta Braves, and Claudette Washington hit a double. It was like a one-run game and late in the game, and Dale Murphy comes up the bat. And so Carter comes to the mound and he says, Doc, we're going to throw him curveballs. No matter what the count is, we're going to throw more curveballs. If we get ahead of him in the count, we're going to throw high fastballs and get him to chase it. I said, okay, no problem. And so when he's going by, he sprints to the mound. He goes, what did he say? What did he say? I said, well, he wants to throw him all curveballs, no matter what the count is. If we happen to get ahead of him, we're going to go high fastballs. No, 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 no. Forget that. Forget that. You got to throw him fastballs inside. Murph likes to thin his arms and hit the ball the other way. You got to throw him all fastballs inside if you walk him fine. But go all fastballs. If you throw a curve, throw it out of the strike zone. So now when Keith's going back to first base, Gary's putting on a curveball. Yeah, I'm shaking off. He's putting on a curveball. I'm shaking him off. Like the third time, Gary calls time, come to the mound, and Keith sprints and meets him there. And so these two guys are going at what I should throw. They're arguing back and forth until Mel Stoudemire, the pitching coach, come to the mound and break it up. And it was, I mean, it was funny. It was funny, but I ended up throwing what Gary wanted at the end. And luckily, no damage was done because I'm sure I would have heard from Keith. Yeah, he wanted 10 strikeouts, plus uh, he wanted me to totally dominate because as a pitcher, sometimes if you're up 8, 9, nothing, and it's like the 6, 7th inning, I might try to work on my changeup or just try to get guys to get ground balls, what have you, but he wanted the best out of you. I remember getting into the game, especially not probably towards the end of season 84, but definitely 85. If I get a strikeout, you know, they're passing the ball around the infield, and then I always get the ball back from the third baseman last, and I would take a peek up there to see how many Ks I have because the K corner is in left field corner. See what I'm at. If I had 10, then I was kind of okay. But if I had like eight or nine, I was definitely going for strikeouts. I mean, I would never admit it when I was playing, but I wanted the 10 strikeouts as well. It's a lot of fun. Uh, 1986, <clears throat> the fun changed. It became more pressure, and that came from myself, the media, and I wouldn't say the fans because they saw the first two years. But what I mean by the media was, uh, I mean, basically they're just doing their job. But if I beat Fernando Valenzuela, which that game sticks out, nine, I mean, nine innings shut out. We went two nothing. I give up maybe three hits. The first question would be, "What happened? You only had five strikeouts." And I'll say, "Well, we won the game, but it's like they don't want to hear about the game. What happened with strikeouts? They'll, they'll find something in the stats because I guess everybody got spoiled by the, the '85 season. Or if you, you know, if I had six uh, complete games and it's after all the break, they say, "What's is there anything different now? You had 16 complete games the year before, but you only have six now." And that took away the fun. I allowed that to take away the fun where I would go out there, I'm thinking I got to pitch a shutout, I got to pitch a complete game, I got to get 10 plus strikeouts. So it became more of a job instead of me still having fun and enjoying what I'm doing and doing whatever I can to help the team win. I allowed that to take the fun away from me. The first book I did, Heat, um, I was into it, I was doing it, I was feeling this is the time to make the life changes. But I wasn't willing to give up everything. Uh, I wanted to keep the lifestyle, but not do the drugs and alcohol, which th that lifestyle would lead right back to the drugs and alcohol. You know, for us hanging out in clubs, hanging out with people that was doing drugs, and, but I was thinking, I have it under control now, I can do this. But kept getting the same results. And that book came about where I had a friend of mine say, man, you should do a book. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I should. I should do a book. Uh, so I did the book. It, my heart wasn't there completely um, on every page, but it was there some. Um, with Doc, the memoir that came out, that book was on me. I mean, that was like, and it, how I came out that, I did uh, time at Pasadena Recovery Center with Dr. Drew, I was ever having talking to him and insights. When I got out of that, um, I actually wrote chapters. I was doing like the step work you have to do in recovery. And I was just writing chapters and stuff that the main topics that I, that I never really talked about or kept as secrets. Um, just doing it myself, writing some chapters, the chapters down. And before I even thought about a book, I was just doing basically homework on myself. I said, wow, this would be a great story. And then I had to ask myself, am I really, really ready to tell this story? But part of me was because that, by going to that show and doing this book would allow me to remove that mask and let people know who I really am, that these are struggles I had, 
this is the lifestyle I was living. This is what was going through my mind at the time. Uh, it was very painful, a lot of it. Um, this is where I'm at now. This is what I'm doing to, to stay clean and sober. And I looked at it as not only would it help me to get all that out, but it would help others who may have a family member or themselves maybe going through a similar situations that they can relate to it. And I had to get the okay for my mom to make sure she was okay and my kids, the older kids, because they don't have to relive some of those dark moments as well. And they say, if it's going to help you, help others, you know, we support you. And so obviously doing that book with uh, my co-writer, Ellis Hennigan, who did a great job, we spent a lot, a lot of time on the couch. I mean, a lot of time, it took nine months to finish, and we was there practically, I would say five, seven days, five or six days a week, just putting in work, putting in the work, and I was co-reading every page, every word. And at times, like the parade, in certain situations, I wasn't sure if I wanted to put that in there, but I said, if I'm gonna tell my story, I have to tell it. And part of that was, like I said, I've always been a people pleaser, I'm getting better with that, but I was like, if I put all this in here, if I come clean and tell the truth, how are people gonna accept me? But once I got over that hurdle and said, I can't worry about people, that's what got me in trouble before, I gotta do this for myself to get all them demons out and, and you know, restart my life from this. And the reception I got from the book and everything has just been great. It's been unbelievable, the support from it.